Hottest topics in the news to one on one interviews and all the hit tunes you want to hear. This is what's hot. It is what's hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. Uh, I have my guest co host, uh, Miss Vanessa Missick, in the building. She's a mass comm student here at NCCU. What it do? How you doing, Vanessa? Thank you so, so much for being on the show. How you doing? Of course, I'm doing very well. I'm just happy to be black and beautiful today. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming in. I'm glad that you are here. Um, um, just talk into the mic just a little bit when you're here. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. Uh, on today's show, we got you covered with the um, hot headlines, the hot report, as we do every show. And of course, on today's show, we got some special guests from the writing and speaking studio here at NCCU, Miss Samantha, Samantha Cheston and uh, Miss Amara Hand. They're going to be joining us uh, at the second hour of the show. Uh, so make sure you tune in for that. But uh, first, we're going to start the show off as we do every show with some positivity we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the grammys we're gonna talk it's, it's a lot of positivity it's the first show of black history month so i'm excited um but we can start the show off with some positivity on the other side of this song of snooze scissor the hot spotlight is next it's what's up with shamai cook it is what's up with shamai cook i am shamai cook the scissor snooze grammy winning song i'm gonna talk about that later in the show and what's up uh, it's what's up with Shamai Cook. Got my guest co host Vanessa Missick. How you doing, Vanessa? Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad to be here. I'm doing very, very well. That's good. That's good. Let's start the show off uh, with some positivity as we do every show. Um, so it's Black History Month, right? And it's the first our first show of Black History Month. So today I'm going to give the hot spotlight to um I'm going to give it to the Breakfast Club. So recently on Monday, uh, it was uh, they they just announced their new uh, co-host, permanent guest co-host, Jess Hilarious. Um, and, you know, I called in to the show and they um, we talked about the Grammys and, you know, they, they told me to give them a shout out. So I'm going to give the Breakfast Club, the DJ Envy, Charlamagne the God and Jess Hilarious, you know, because they're shaping culture when it comes to the entertainment and the hip hop business um, and giving people uh, in our culture the, the pe- platform to speak the truth and spread the knowledge of how we can affect the culture in a positive light and um you know how we can spread the love when it comes to you know artists entertainment movies and all that jazz so i'm going to give the hot spotlight to the breakfast club dj envy charlamagne the god and just with the mess just hilarious jessica robin moore now vanessa who's going to give your hot spotlight to my hot spotlight is going to go out to Demetrius Harmon. He's the owner and founder of the business You Matter. So if you've ever seen anybody walking around with those hoodies, uh-huh. like You Matter University, what have you. Yeah. Um, it's very like mental wellness based. Wow. And even on the sleeves of the hoodies, it says, um, I feel weak, but I know I'm strong. Mm. And, you know, somebody out there, they might not be feeling too well. And yeah. I just want them to know, first of all, I'm here for you and I love you. But second of all, you matter. Mm. And that's sort of a shameless plug but also yeah <laughs> you matter so my shout out goes to demetrius harmon today and black lives matter you know black history matter and black history is american history so that's why we matter Hello. Um, and, and that was the hot spotlight if you want to give somebody the hot spotlight give us a call 919-579-2444 is the number up next is the hot uh headlines and the hot headlines uh i got you covered uh <laughs> with the NBA announcing a two hundred thousand uh, dollar donation for professional and development for HBCU, so um, it's that's next uh, after this. His Tyler Water here on NCCU Audio Net. This is a Grammy Award winning song. That was SZA, Kill Bill. That's how I Shemai Cook. I'm Shemai Cook. I'm my guest co-host, Vanessa Missick. How you doing, Vanessa? I'm doing well. All right, all right. Um, enough of that. Let's get into the hot headlines. Here we go. The news. Here we go. All right, gonna go there. Well, it is what's hot so, with Shamaika, so we go there all the time. Okay. These are the stories heating up in the news. Someone is not doing their job correctly because this is this is blasphemous. I'm sorry. This is hot headlines. Here. Allegedly. Okay. On what's hot? 
All right, let's get into these hot headlines. So recently, uh, the NBA announced that they uh, are investing $200,000 for professional development um, opportunities to HBCUs. Uh, The HBCUs that will include these donations, it will be uh, split down the middle between Virginia Union University and Winston-Salem State University um, for the A, I mean, CIAA. Uh, conference. Uh, this is this is a great initiative. Um, this is the the NBA has been the only I think uh, billion dollar organization that has been consistent about supporting HBCUs, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, major props to the um, to the NBA, and um, I'm excited for that. That's that's good good for those institutions. And uh, Virginia Union is a very small school, and Winston Salem is semi small, but it's a fair institution as well. So major props to that. Um, so a Missouri Starbucks employee employee allegedly lost their job after throwing hands with <laughs> a robber. Uh, so. Two uh, Missouri Starbucks workers uh, have reportedly lost their job after throwing hands with two robbers. According to the Independent, the incident occurred on December 17th, located in St. Louis. According to the outlet, 20-year-old Michael Harris was working at a Starbucks drive-thru uh, when a two mags men ordered. Uh, and, oh, two mags men entered the the men reportedly the directed everyone in the restaurant to get on the ground. Uh, and uh, Harris, Michael, the employee, complied with the man's uh, the man's demands and um, and protocols. But when uh, one of the robbers hit him, he defended himself and hit him back, and therefore he got fired um, by his employer, Starbucks. So the question I think is. Should have he should he have been fired? Cause he was fired for violating company policy. Um, if violating company policy saves my life, I'm gonna just have to get fired. Cause what do you mean I'm getting <laughs> yes. fired for hitting bro? Exactly. Oh, no it man. makes no sense. No man. It makes no sense. But listen, I feel like Starbucks should give him a raise and give mm-hmm. him his job back because a 20 year old, if God forbid something have happened to me, cause I just turned 20. And God, God, God forbid that happened to me. Of course, I'm going to defend myself. But, you know, it is what it is. That's how corporate America works. But I digress. Uh, and finally, an elderly mom is leaving her 2.8 million fortune to her pets after she claims her kids never visited her when she was sick. First of all. I do want to play a game, but I don't think she looks like me and you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that she looks like me and you because ain't no way I ain't leaving nothing for my children. I don't care. At least, at least $20 at least, you know, or (laughs) like a two point, you're going to leave $2.8 million to pets. My thing is like, if your kids don't ever come see you in adulthood, why? Like, I, I want to get into that. Like, what reason have yes. you given them to not want to visit you in their adulthood? Because mm-hmm. once you're an adult, it's like, okay, I have free will. If I yeah. want to come around, I'm going to come around. Exactly. If I don't, I'm not going to. So why aren't your kids coming around, babe? Why are you stuck with your pets? Well, yeah, she's an elderly chi- uh, woman in China. So so she de- uh, decided to leave her $2.8 million fortune to her cats and dogs instead hmm. of children. What are they going to do with that? That's what I'm trying to say. Like... What? Where's the fortune? What is cats and dogs gonna do? Like, you can't buy that much of a fa- fancy dog food or cat food right. with two point eight million dollars. That makes no sense. Absolutely not. I digress. Though. <laughs> and that was your hot headlines. Uh, what do we got coming up in the hot report, uh, Vanessa? We're gonna talk about the Grammys, of oh, course. We're gonna God. discuss Wendy Williams a little bit and then a new um, documentary that she has coming up. And and a lot more. We're All gonna right. talk about what's going on. Yep, it's what's hot with Shamai Cook. We shall be back after this. It's Paint the Time Red, Doja Cat right here. It's what's hot with Shamai Cook. I'm Shamai Cook. Got my guest co-host, Vanessa Missick in the building. How you doing, Vanessa? I'm doing so good. Good, 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 good. That was All My Life, uh, Lil Durk featuring uh, J. Cole. It's a Grammy winning song. Uh, won a Grammy. Lil Durk won his first Grammy. Um, 
over the weekend. So we're going to talk about that. Actually, it's time for the hot report. Speaking of Grammys, let's get into it. All right. I'm very well known in a way. Yippee! I get paid to talk about you, and I'll talk to you. Let's go! From pop culture to all the news at NCCU, this is the Hot Report. All right, we're going to go there. Well, it is what's so, hot with Shemaiko, little, so we go there all the time. Okay. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> on what's hot. Turn it, turn it up. All right, Vanessa, what's going on in the Hot Report? What's going on in pop culture? So this past Sunday, the 66th annual Grammys were held in L.A., hosted by Trevor Noah, Trevor Noah excuse me, um, and rapper Killer Mike won three Grammys for Best Rap Album, Best Rap Song, and Best Rap Performance. Um, just to add, Best Rap Song, Scientists and Engineers, I can verify that that was, in fact, the best. That is my jam. Okay. Um, there we are. Let's get into it. Black man in America, and as a kid, I had a dream to become a part of music. And that nine-year-old is excitedly <clears throat> dancing in fr- inside of me right now. I want to thank Loma Vista. Adam, Tom, Todd, Ryan, all of you guys. I want to thank my management company. My manager, Will, is active. I want to thank my a and Cuz Lightyear. I want to thank everyone who dares to believe that art can change the world. So thank Dre, thank Future, thank Aaron, thank all the producers on here. But everyone in this room, it is our responsibility to keep using our imagination to shape and form the world. Thank you, and I hope it's not the last time I see you tonight. Major props to Killer Mike. Major props to Killer Mike. Well deserved, like like Vanessa said. Uh, what really happy is though, he got arrested after immediately after he get his award. He got arrested yeah. for. It's no like confirmed details on why he got arrested. Um, but uh, it was alleged that uh, he got into an altercation with a third party security guard. That's just allegedly. It's not confirmed, but. Killer Mike, well deserved. I'm glad that he swept all three awards. And he told, he told people when he this album came out, he wants to win the Grammy. He wants to win, especially in that category. But well deserved, well deserved. And Killer Mike, uh, it's a it's a lot of good songs that you know, like like Vanessa said, it's a lot of good songs off that album, and uh, it's well deserved. We, it, I love when um this saying is called, it gets greater later. You know, everybody wants to go with the 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 young. Artists, the youngest, you know, the youngest and best. But you know, when when you're older, you get more wisdom. So you you know, it's it's something to listen to. Yeah. So that's that's why I think it was his whole body of work was well deserved, and I'm glad that he swept in all categories. I feel like the timing mm-hmm. of that arrest yes. was so intentional. Like, that's why a, now? Yeah, why yeah, here? Yeah. You know, there was no need for that. Yeah. I I, I want to hear his his uh his perspective on what happened but uh but major props to him as he won that grammy made history so yeah next up SZA she won best r&b song for her song snooze let's see what that's about you don't really understand um i came really really far and i i can't believe this is happening and it feels very fake and i'm saying hi taylor <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love you. Um, I'm just very grateful. I'm not an attractive crier. Have a good evening. <laughs> that is so real. I, I know it's so real, but SZA, SZA, SZA definitely deserves. She didn't. Dis- I'm glad that she got this uh, this win, but she deserved album of the year as mm-hmm. well. Besides Taylor Swift, SZA was snubbed for album of the year. Um, but when they when I talk about SZA, a lot of pe- people compare her to Mary J. Blige. Because of the how much she puts her soul into these types of music. And her performance at the Grammy, she did uh, performances of Snooze and Kill Bill. It was a really good, uh, it was like a reenactment of the music video. So, major props to SZA, well-deserving. Um, we were talking about it when uh, uh, Lizzo presented the award. It was very emotional because, like she said in her speech, uh, they knew each other. They used to perform at coffee shops with yeah. only a hundred people, and twenty for, since for almost ten years. So mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's like a full circle moment for them, and I I, I love that for them. So major props to uh, SZA. That the realness in that acceptance speech was so cute. Yeah. Like it was something yes. for me to connect to because it's yes. like, oh my gosh, I'm an ugly crier too. I don't <laughs> want anyone to see me. One thing I'm gonna do is cry. But also, nobody needs to be looking at me right now. Yeah. I definitely earned this award, but nobody look at me while I'm crying. 
<laughs> but major props to SZA. Definitely, de- definitely deserved that Grammy. And she took home two other Grammys as well. But yeah, as she that, should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next up, we got Victoria Monet. She won Best New Artist. This award was a 15-year pursuit. I moved to LA in 2009, and I like to liken myself to a plant who um, was planted, and you can look at the music industry as soil, and it can look at, be looked at as dirty, or it can be looked at as a source of nutrients and water. And my roots have been growing underneath ground, unseen for so long. Major props, major props. You know, her her fruits came to labor. Mm-hmm. You know, major props to her. Uh, she she was up against a lot of good competition for that category when it came to uh, Ice Spice, uh, Coco Jones. Uh, it, I think it was down to those three when it came to best new artist. But I'm not mad because technically she's not a new artist. Cause yeah. she, but she's a new sing like artist she's been writing for years um in this industry i think she has written for ariana grande uh one that's one of the biggest names i think she has written for but it's, I'm, I'm glad that you know she's in the spotlight now and major props to victoria monet i've heard i've heard a lot of people say that she writes for ariana but i've heard a couple people say that they've noticed how like ariana has taken up some of her personality mm-hmm. in a way yep and i feel like that just goes to speak for just how much she has to offer as an artist mm-hmm. like you've got people copying you babe yeah you're really doing yeah. your thing it's a good influence next up lil Durk and j cole won best melodic rap performance for the song all my life congratulations to them you know well well deserved for them it's a good record and i think it was one of the best songs of the summer uh so yeah it was a really good record you said you you didn't even know it was uh j um not j cole you didn't even know that was a uh, little dirk i when, didn't when you first heard the song the record i'm not really i'm not really a little dirk person yeah like, me either no, he, uh, me either no yeah like he has hits i can yes, acknowledge that he does have hits yeah. but when i first heard the song like when i think of little dirk that's not the voice that i connected to in my head Understood. so when i heard that i was like who is this young man mm-hmm. who is this young man <laughs> yeah so yeah congratulations to little dirk and uh j cole his from um, that was his first grammy ever um not j cole's uh, little dirk so congratulations to him and then next up, Coco Jones. She won Best R&B Performance for the song I See You. Uh, yeah, we just played that earlier in the show. If you listen, if you listen to the show live, uh, we're playing all, all the song, basically all the uh, the songs that won uh, Grammys uh, over the weekend. Uh, I See You, like Coco Jones, is, she's, she's a sensational talent Truly. when it comes to she's a good actress. Um, you know, I love her on Bel Air as uh, Hillary. You know, we, we my generation, our generation, she, we grew up with with her yeah. basically from Disney, from the Disney Channel, from Let It Shine, and you know, it, it's, gl- it's glad that you know some Disney kids can come up really good. Speaking of my my Cyrus won her first two Grammys too right. as a Disney kid, you know. So not all Disney kids are crazy. So I'm glad that <laughs> Coco Jones like- proved wrote that stereotype in Miley Cyrus. I feel like Disney kids are like forced to be crazy. Not forced to be no, crazy, but no, like no, no, being no, no, a, no, no. no I, imagine being a child actor though. Like you're in these situations and these areas where people really don't have your best interest. They're just trying to like make money off of you. They go crazy because they kinda have to go crazy. Tr- okay. Well, okay. Not all of them. Not all. all Most of certainly them, not. Because all. there's cer- cer- certain some people who are crazy. I'm not gonna <laughs> say names, but there's certain people who are crazy who came out of Disney. Um, but even Livy Rodrigo, she she's a Disney kid. She came from Disney. You, I remember for what's that show that she was on? Bizarre Bark. That was a show I've never seen. that Yes, before. but but she, she was on. She was a Disney kid. Okay, per. then then now now she's a pop uh, pop sensation. She's a pop. Uh, what, what do they call it? Punk punk pop, whatever funky pop. But she's a pop sensation. You know who Girl else? Punk? Huh? Girl punk. Is that the? I think I, I think that's like yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's a pop sensation. Who else? Miley Cyrus. She won two Grammys over the weekend. Pop sensation. Uh, it's just like Disney does create, you know, good talent, but some ha- some of these people are just crazy. But I digress. Um, uh, what else? Um, Jay Z during his um Dr. Dre Global Impact Award acceptance speech, he spoke on Beyonce never winning Album of the Year. Ah, uh, here's his speech. Up, y'all. We love y'all, we love y'all. We want y'all to get it right, at least get it close to right. And obviously it's subjective. Y'all don't gotta clap at everything. Obviously it's, sub- <laughs> obviously it's subjective because, you know, it's music and it's opinion-based, but, you know, some things, you know, 
I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album of the year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys, never won album of the year. That doesn't work. You know, some of you, some of you gonna go home tonight and feel like you've been robbed. Some of you may get robbed. <laughs> some of you don't belong in the category. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that was it. No, when I get nervous, I tell the truth. Um, but outside of that, outside of that, you know, we gotta keep showing up. And forget the Grammys for a second, just in life. As, I, as my daughter st sits and stares at me nervous as I am. Um, um, just in life, you gotta keep showing up. Just keep showing up. Forget the Grammys, you gotta keep showing up until, you, until they give you all those accolades you feel you deserve. Until they call you chairman, until they call you a genius, until they call you the greatest of all time. You feel me? Jay-Z, Hof. You know, he just drops a lot of jewels in there. He threw shade, but he threw jewels in there as well. Mm -hmm. Because to the Beyonce, he was he didn't say her name, but maybe I know he's talking about his wife, Beyonce. You know, it, it makes sense, you know, and yeah, I think he was throwing shade at Taylor Swift as well because or well, some people who should have been nominated, but they are nominated. It doesn't make sense. I love the Grammys. You know, they they don't get it right all the time, but I feel like I just love music. This is why I do radio. And I feel like the Grammys celebrate, you know, the art and science of music. That's the purpose of these of uh, this award. And that's the and that's why all all these artists and you know producers songwriters engineers they love this type of award show but when it comes to i think jay-z brought up a great point and i think um he dropped some good jewels in there when you keep getting a no when when you keep getting th going through adversity don't take no for an answer um beyonce has been nominated i think for over a hundred grammys and she only has won a quarter of those so that that shows you that even the greatest can't win all the time. And Beyonce is the greatest of of this generation, absolutely. Well, well, greatest of all time when it comes to Grammy wins. So, and that and it, that comes to the legacy as well. And you know, Jay Z. You know, I love that acceptance speech. I, I I'm a big huge Jay Z fan. Actually, for my birthday, my mother got me a Jay Z vinyl record because I have a vinyl player. Uh, so it was like kind of of a good on my birthday weekend. He gets this award. It was like well over overdue. And Dr. Dre picked this a good one, his first one. Uh, what's your take on this? I really love that he said keep showing up. Yeah, because especially as like you know the system is rigged. Obviously, like when it comes to them giving black people their yeah. props, giving mm -hmm. us what we need, what we deserve. Yep. we're not gonna get it a hundred percent of the time. Keep showing up though, because it's one thing for you to be like, okay, I'm done. I give up. I'm tired. They're not giving me what I need. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing to be like, I'm going to sit in your face until you see I am not playing with y'all. Yes. I am not. Mm -hmm. And and I love that. And also, I would just, it's just kind of astonishing to me that Beyonce did not win Album of the Year, considering the way that Renaissance, and I'm late to listening to Renaissance. I will yeah. admit that. But considering the way Renaissance, like, that was a movement. You can't tell me that was not a movement. There were so many people that were like, oh, I'm going to see Beyonce. People that I've never seen mention Beyonce in mm. their lives. I'm going to see Beyonce. I'm going to see Beyonce. Like, disco ball down. Like, <laughs> what? Y'all are really showing out. Obviously, this album got a little something in it. I don't know. So people people really showed out for that. And the response of the people was enough mm. for me to be like, yeah, yeah, this deserves everything and more. Absolutely. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, listen, Beyonce is she brought people together, mm -hmm. and you know she's definitely for the culture, and I, and she's an entertainer. She's just not a singer. That's another thing. She's just not a singer. She is a performer. She could dance. Mm -hmm. She could sing. It, it it's it's, it's a, she's just talented. It's just that's what she is. So you know, major props to Beyonce. All right, what else is in the hot report? We're, we're done with Grammys. All righty, all righty. We're done with the Grammys. For sure. Wendy Williams, she's highlighting her financial and health status and a few issues that she has going on in her new documentary trailer. Um, she's back and she's giving people an inside look into her life. She revealed that she has seen a neurologist in a clip from her upcoming Lifetime documentary that will air on February 24th and the 25th. 
A trailer for the two-part documentary was released on Thursday, and in one part, Wendy says that she has no money. She was put in front of a judge and given a guardian. That was when they took her away from us. I have no money, and I'm gonna tell you something. If it happens to me, it could happen to you. As her family, we were all sitting on the sidelines watching, and she was crying out for help. Did you drink this whole thing today? Keep it there. Okay. Keep it there. My mom, she always talks about how she wants to work, but I feel as though she's worked enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. Right? This is all too much. I think she's losing memory. Have you guys noticed that? How dare him? Anybody could look at her and tell this is not just alcohol. There's something more going on. Listen, uh, Wendy, Wendy Williams, I'm sending healing, healing energy to Wendy Williams. That's number one. Number two, Wendy Williams is one of the reasons why I'm doing what I do every day. Number, uh, that's number two. And, you know, Wendy Williams, I really feel bad. But at the same time, we saw this coming because mm -hmm. karma goes both ways. And for years and years, she's been putting people down, throwing shade, even though it was a truth. But, you know, pulling people down and throwing shade, that comes back to you. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in Charlamagne, the God said this uh, when this trailer came out. Nobody can ever do what Wendy did again because it's that era of media is over uh, when it comes to, you know, being messy and gossiping and there's you could gossip but there's certain levels of what you know the way wendy do it and i feel like she's feeling the raft she's reaping what she sold basically yeah. so and I, I i you know like i said i look up to wendy williams i still honor you know the type of you know the way she did it for 13 years went to that purple chair told you know gave us the celebrity scoop and you know her delivery and to be consistent as a black woman on daytime television it's 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 something to be you know not forgotten but that era of media is over yeah and there's no other you know person that can do what wendy did how she did it because they won't be successful in, in the long run because that like i said that area of media is over Oh, yeah. Wendy Williams, like, I feel like she's a statue, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. in a way like you, like, as you said, you can never discredit, forget what exactly she's done, the staple that she has been in terms of media, but also within our community yep. as black yep. people with culture. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I like I can even remember being like 10 and it's the weekend or something or like it's a break and my parents aren't home and I'm sneaking to watch the Wendy Williams show because exactly. that was like not a thing. Mom and dad, if you're listening, ignore this. <laughs> that was like not a thing in my house. Like you do not watch like any show that can that is considered like a gossip show. Gotcha. But I, I would be there and she's sipping her tea, talking yes. about hot topics and I am tuned in with her. That I'm first, one of the co-hosts in that first, moment. Exactly. Clap clap if you're watching. Clap if right. you're watching. Clap if you're watching. Exactly. No, what it, yeah, Wendy Williams is like, I still, you know, no, that's that's how I'm a big fan of hers, but I still, you know, watch like her old to hot topics because mm -hmm. it's just her delivery on how she is. It's like she's like that auntie that's just telling you what's going on with these celebrities. Like it seems like it's just effort effortless, you know, when it came to what she does. And then, you know, I really am um, sad to see her how she doing. And like her son said in the in the audio, um, and I'm, I will be watching this documentary. Um, she she doesn't need to work again. She, she has worked enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of selfish for us to want her to come back because you see, you know, she's not well. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think the area of Wendy Williams is over, you know, because I remember when uh, Sherry Shepard took her um took her time slot um, and basically her whole staff. Uh, you know, she she was announcing like, you know, I'm not going to watch Sherry. You know, she took my place. Um, and, you know, it's like, but it, it's the way that you treat people. That's how it's going to come back. True. And, you know, I, I feel bad for Wendy, but at, at the same time, she she uh, she had it coming. But um, I'm still, like I said, she, uh, don't, she's a human at the end of the day, like her sister said uh, as well in the, um, in the in the audio, in the trailer. So. No, I will be watching February twenty fourth and twenty February twenty sixth on Lifetime. So, my 
My that's diva. two days before my birthday. Yeah. Maybe I should oh, tune in yes. as a little as a little birthday gift. For myself. real, for real. Cause I know she had a lifetime um, deal because she did a, a movie with them, or her life, or her life biopic, and then she did a documentary as well about her life. So, <sighs> well, that was the hot report. Good, good job, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we're um, it's the, at the top of the hour. Got the uh, cover, got you covered with the hot mix of the day, and uh, later in the second hour, we're gonna have Miss Samantha Huss, uh, Chase, did, and Amar Hand here on What's Hot. It's What's Hot with my Cook. You're listening to What's Hot on NCCU Audio. It is What's Hot with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I got my guest co-host, Vanessa Missick in the building. How you doing, Vanessa? I'm doing well, of course. I'm well. That's good. That's good. And we got some special guests in the building from the writing and speaking studio here at NCCU. It's Miss Samantha Chested and Miss Amara Han. Welcome to What's Hot. Thank you guys so much for coming on the show. How are you guys doing today? Listen. Thank we're you good. for having us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We're doing well. We're doing well. Doing very well. No, first of all, first of all, I appreciate you guys spending, um, you know, taking out your time out of your busy schedule for coming on the show, um, and um, being we being with us for a few minutes. Uh, so, uh, that's, I'm gonna start off with Miss Han. Um, what made you want to get into writing? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Ooh. Well, my mother always told me that. You, I have a story to tell, mm-hmm. and I should do what I can to make sure that story gets told. So mm-hmm. I've always just had a great appreciation for words and um, and being able to tell, I guess, my side of the story or just to tell my story in general. Um, I've always enjoyed writing, um, not always for academic purposes, especially back in the day, but um, I've always just had a passion for expressing myself. Mm-hmm. And when I had the opportunity to major in English... I was like, okay, this is this seems to be my thing. Gotcha. And then um, once I realized that, okay, this is really what I want to continue doing, I got my master's degree in rhetoric and writing. Okay. Um, and, and that led me to right here, to mm. come back to HBCUs and to come back and teach, um, you know, possibly instill or pass down that passion for writing okay. to my students. So. Uh, any question? I do have a question, actually. So um, you work in the writing studio. Yes. What... Okay, I hope this comes off right. What's your favorite type of paper to help students um, compose? That is a good one. <laughs> I love helping students with personal statements. Okay. Okay. And, um, I, I love it because we get the opportunity to find out more about the student, more about them and their story, um, but then also ha- help them to shape that story so that they can get the um, the achievement that they want, um, right. whether it's to get in, get a scholarship, get into grad school, or whatever. Um, I love being able to help students tell their story in the best possible way. That That's that's a lot of fun to me. Can you talk about how, how important storytelling is when you're writing your story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of times we just think, oh, let me just make th- these five paragraphs, an intro, conclusion, and three body paragraphs. But there's more to storytelling than just five paragraphs. Mm-hmm. You're more than likely going to be more than five paragraphs just to tell who you are and what you're about. And so, oh man, storytelling, it's just important to, number one, remember the things that you can. Okay. And um, those, the things that you can remember, you know, give, you know, tell us those details. Give us those vivid details, um, you know. Your, your your ability to tell a story um, and tell your own story very well is it, it can make a break. It can make a break like a, mm. an interview or a relationship, a, a lot of things. So, um, just it's really important to be able to uh, to express yourself coherently and cohesively um, in the form of storytelling. Miss Chase, let me get to you. Uh, I don't want to, she is here. She's trying to speak. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's up? Uh, you know, Miss Miss DL, she's the, my boss. You, yes. She told me that you went to Norfolk. I did. Yes. So, I did. Yes. As did I. You did. I, I did. Okay, I did. That's good. That's good. Right. Yes, I earned my so, master's from Norfolk. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Can you talk about you know how it um, important public speaking is when it comes to being at an HBCU and articulating yourself uh, verbally? Yeah. I mean, listen, being able to convey your thoughts orally in an effective manner, an interesting manner, a relatable manner is extremely critical 
to um, your performance, mm-hmm. right? To your uh, experience. It is through networking where you gain opportunity. Yes. When you are exposed to new things, it's where you meet rejection. You can be very solid and sound in black and white on paper. But if you're unable, or, or let me let me rephrase, if you, um, if it's challenging for you to communicate with others, okay, you see what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Absolutely, it can, yeah. Pre- it could cause a barrier mm-hmm. of some sort. Um, you have to be able to talk, and, and a lot a lot of times throughout your collegiate experience, from a classroom perspective, you are asked to present. Yep. But it's bigger than that. Yep. Right? In many of our majors, and many of our disciplines, we are presenting at conferences. We yep. are attending or preparing for career fairs and expos. Yep. We are constantly thrusting ourselves in, in instances where we're meeting and greeting. Yeah. Building and opting to maintain connections to prepare us for our next. So when we think about the commonly asked question from an interview standpoint, tell me a little bit about mm-hmm. yourself. What does that question even entail? That's true. Yeah. Right? So much so that you leave the one that you're you're having the chat with wanting more of you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But if if you look at someone and you're giving them their time your timeline, well, that's not what I asked. Mm-hmm. I want to know who you, you know, break it down and be able to do so in a confident manner. Mm -hmm. That's key. Yeah. That's key. So it's essential to our overall personal growth Mm. and especially while while attending an HBCU. Yes. You know? What made you want to get into teaching, Um, you know, verbal um, communication and, you know, uh, because I know you, I think you, did you teach a course for, um, uh, uh, what what is the course? Elements of Speech. speech. I still teach it. Yes. You still do. Yes. Yes. So can you talk about what made you want to get into that? Well, yeah. So my fellow Eagles that are used or have been exposed to the black church, Uh the black Mm -hmm. church is where I gained my confidence. Okay. Um, Church allowed me exposure. Okay. And so through church, I was exposed to oratorical contests. I was winning. I was being recognized. I found my strength. I tried sports. Uh, basketball, although I have height, it didn't connect. <laughs> hey, I landed, you like, you know, all I had to do was put it in, but it was challenging, right? Um, and so I swam. Uh, okay. Swimming paid for my undergrad experience. Okay. But in that, I the church gave me a space to feel strong and confident. Okay. And that's where I connected to uh, public speaking mm. and um, felt like I, I can do it, yeah. you know? And so I ran with it. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I have a sort of a follow-up. You said the church gave you confidence. So yep. prior to that, did you find yourself in a place where you were experiencing like timid or like shyness when it came to public speaking? It wasn't even that I was, ex- I, I didn't know it. Right. You okay. know, the classrooms back at that, during that time, it wasn't a lot of uh, presenting for me. It was yeah. more so a lot of writing. Okay. But the church gave me a platform Okay. Ah. to use okay. my voice okay. in a way that wasn't so restrictive. And yes. this, okay, this is kind of um, a question for both of us, both of you guys. I'm going to start off with Miss Han. Can you talk about um, why is writing so important in culture? Mm. In culture in Yes, in, in, our, in black culture. Why is mm. it so important? I mean, oh, especially if you want to take it to black culture, there was once upon a time we didn't have that privilege. Yeah, we, right, exactly. We, right. That was that was not afforded to us. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the ability to read and write mm-hmm. and, you know, speak our minds the yeah. way that we want to, that was something that was once against the law. Yeah. Which is nuts. Um, so I think that that's just one that's just one of many reasons why I think writing is so important to to us. Um, to be able to have that ability to have that skill. Mm. Yes. Um, to be able to express yourself um, uh, clearly and effectively. Um, and it's something that it's, it's not lost on our culture. Our people, we we are, are we are an expressive people. Yes. Yes. Whether it's through word, whether it's through music, <clears> through <throat> art, through whatever it is, we are extremely expressive, and yes, so we, we deserve whatever and however many means to express ourselves that we're allotted. Mm-hmm. Um, and so again, I came to teach at HBCU because again, I'm a product of an HBCU. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what is. So why why it's so important to be able to write clearly and write effectively and write professionally mm-hmm. and, and all of this. Um, and so I want to tell my students, like, hey, it's more than just this, what seems like a chore mm-hmm. that you have to do in this class. Like, I, I teach first year writing. So, oh, it's, <laughs> it's nobody's favorite thing at that point. But right. I, I'm the one to let them know that if you can't 
write well, if you can't express yourself mm. well, then you are, you know, you're 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 facing a world of a lot of, you know, miscommunications, misconceptions, misinterpretations, yeah. um, missed opportunities That's even. Right. Um, there are so many times that I, um, honestly, like full transparency mode, yeah. I applied for jobs and I wrote cover letters and I didn't proofread that thing. Oh. And, <laughs> and I didn't get a call back. No, I wonder why, right? <laughs> right. But I didn't, you know, pay attention to my words closely enough and didn't really like have the the the, the mindset, the yeah. focused mindset to to express myself clearly. Now, I lost out on some opportunities, but ultimately that led me here. That That's led good. me Absolutely. right here. So you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what 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 what? Uh, how is speaking important to culture? I mean, just that you know, you are you are your voice. Okay, and yeah. so we have one. Right. And yeah. as my counterpart stated, we've been gifted mm -hmm. the privilege to use mm -hmm. our voice yeah. and, and, or to um, tap into expression, whatever that looks like for you. So we are already battling so many things mm. from day to day. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Um, just because of the color of our skin, yeah. where yeah. we come from, who yeah. we come from, where we live, all of these things, stereotypes. So we have to be able to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just as my, my partner here says, you know, writing effectively, writing clearly and concisely, the same thing applies for speaking. Gotcha. Um, it's a necessary skill to polish. Mm. It isn't something that you can just work with or practice once or twice, three, mm -hmm. four right, times. Right. It is an ongoing, continuous. right, a continuous cycle of building. Gotcha. The, that is for those who desire to enrich mm. and who want to propel forward. Gotcha. We can never be too comfortable. Never. Never. You're, you're correct. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so just as my counterpart just, you know, mentioned about um, not receiving a call back mm -hmm. because of the personal statement or mm -hmm. the cover letter. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Same thing with interviewing. Gotcha. Right. You turn in all your uh, uh, app materials. Mm -hmm. Then you're asked to come in for the interview and how you choose or how you opt to communicate yeah. is going to what? Yeah. Possibly propel you forward mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Yeah, it carries fair, weight. You have a fair <laughs> yeah. point. That's fair right. point. Right. Yes. It, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just want to um, say we're still here uh, checking in with Miss Amanda uh, Chasen and Miss Amara Hand of the Writing and Speaking Studio here at NCCU. Uh, what when when it comes to working at HBCU? What are some challenges that student face and that you see student faces uh, when it comes to writing and speaking? Mm, I see a lot of students um, come in and saying. Things like, um, oh, I was told I have to come here mm -hmm. because my teacher said I don't know how to write, or my teacher said something, something a little unsavory or something a little yeah. like unsettling. Okay. Um, and that that's really heartbreaking, you mm -hmm. know. Um, having attended an HBCU and having been one of y'all once yeah. upon a time mm -hmm. um, in your shoes, like I was told, like oh, th this this isn't it, like this isn't good. Um, you know, I, I've been told that before and mm. I know that that's not a good feeling. That's not yeah. going to really, it doesn't help like that tough nope. love. It just doesn't hit the same for everybody mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and so I see a lot of students come in saying, oh, well, I don't know how to write. Right. You absolutely know how to write. Mm -hmm. You you made it to this point. Yeah. You had to <laughs> right. write something very well true. <laughs> in order to get here. Um, yeah. But but that 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 little nagging feeling of doubt because you've been told one thing or another about how you write you write how you speak or mm -hmm. you, yes. you have too many issues you write unprofessionally you all of that um that can cause a damper mm -hmm. on one spirit and and that's hard to see but it also feels good to be able to pull mm -hmm. students back up yeah. from mm -hmm. that and and have them say like oh no i i, I can write yeah. that's right you know it that's 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 really fulfilling that's the fulfilling side of that mm-hmm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. With speaking, I say that it um, it rests in fear. Mm. A lot of our fellow eagles are uncomfortable with public speaking, mm. or not even just public speaking, but engaging yeah. with others from an interpersonal standpoint, gotcha. a small group standpoint. So when fear tends to set in, we retreat. Yeah. Right. I don't want to polish the skill. Okay. Right. I don't want to expose myself to it because I'm uncomfortable. Mm. So learning to become comfortable with the uncomfortable. This is bigger than the the now, okay. right? right? So how do we tap into strategies and best practices to help us to help push us through those challenging moments? Okay. Because anxiety, or rather speech anxiety, is a real thing. Mm -hmm. 
communication apprehension wow. is a real thing. Okay. Fear is a real thing. So much so, it can paralyze you. Yeah, right? it can. You're it right. can. Yeah, you're it right. can. And so we avoid it. Mm -hmm. So when I think about our students, fear mm. prevents us. Okay. Right. And we get in the class and we're like, oh, mm -hmm. I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, or when we say we encourage our students to come to the writing and speaking studio, it's a space that I don't want to entertain. Mm. I don't want to sharpen the skill because I don't like speaking. Mm. I'd rather text you. I'd rather video message you. Yeah. I'd rather not do anything that's going to require. But <laughs> even even texting and that goes to writing, writing. Mm -hmm. that translate into because I, I do it see myself when I even write these scripts. I see like <laughs> I write when I write uh I I don't capitalize the mm -hmm. I. It's like <laughs> I, or when I write like you, I just write you. you not, yeah. It's like it translate I think it's a generational thing because mm -hmm. we're so used I think that's a COVID thing as well, because we're so used to being in, on our phones or or devices. Mm -hmm. It translates into how we communicate effectively through speech and through writing. Mm -hmm. yes. So, you know, so I, I just um, my last question is: What should students do to become good writers and good speakers? Mm. You, oh man, I was you were tapping right, right there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, um, practicing. Yes, practice doesn't just make. It doesn't just make perfect. It makes progress. Okay. Progress mm. is more important than, yeah, than perfection. Absolutely. Um, so I was the same way. Um, I was very much like a very text heavy kind of person. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, I, I was I was a habitual lower uh, lowercase person, like yes. lowercase I. Yes. I would lowercase the A in my name and all of that. <laughs> um, but I started to pay attention to the certain conventions of writing okay. that that are you know widely accepted, like capitalizing the I, mm -hmm. ending with you know using punctuation even mm -hmm. correctly. I yeah. started using that in text messages, and I always kind of thought like this person probably thinks I'm a loser. I <laughs> 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 think I'm a super nerd for using semicolons and a colon and, yeah. and all of that. But I I did it, and I started that in undergrad, and now like I feel like I have mastered a lot of those. A lot of those rules, a lot okay. of those marks, and all of that. So it takes practice, even when you don't think it's really necessary. Mm -hmm. it, it 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 helps to to get that practice in. Like even if you're just texting your mom, Absolutely. using using you know the ellipsis, using mm -hmm. the semicolon yeah. here and there. It's like, oh, okay, I know how to use this now. That's so right. then you know how to use it later on in life. And the difference between Miss, Mrs., Mrs. That's and it. Miss, yes. Yes. yes, that's another that's, one. Oh, oh, that's yes. a big one. <laughs> yes, but yeah, what? How should people, um, students, become? Uh, what should students do to become good speakers? Exposure. Okay. Try. Um, put yourself in situations where you have to attempt the skill. Gotcha. Give it your best shot. You know, um, I'm a, a lover of Don Miguel Ruiz, an author of The Four Agreements. Mm -hmm. And the fourth agreement is always do your best. That's all I ask, right? That's all that an HBCU is asking mm -hmm. for you to yeah. simply do your, your best. And what other setting, mm -hmm. right, is going to afford you support yep. and guidance mm -hmm. and encouragement and motivation. And no judgment. And no, and no judgment. judgment. Yes. You can be authentically yourself, mm -hmm. yes. right, just with the polish. Yep. All yep. you want to do is polish. Yes. Yeah. That's it. So when you lean into to that and shift your mindset, then you can set yourself up. Okay. Mm -hmm. For progression. Mm. It takes a level of mindfulness, I think, in order to improve, in order to say, I want to get better at insert thing here, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just takes a level of, of, of intention. Mm. Um, okay. Intention and mindfulness of what you want to do and how you want to succeed at this thing. That, right. that um, allows you to, you know, just to get better. Mm. To get better. Mm -hmm. I like that. And willingness. Yeah. 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 Effort. Effort. Yeah. Effort. We could go on and on, yeah. right? Honestly. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, thank, so, well, before you let you go, where can people contact you and how can people contact you um, if they want your resources? Okay. Yeah. So we are available in the Taylor Education Building. That is right by the Jesus Steps, if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and yeah. right across from the Student Services Building. Um, we are in room 102. That's the annex attached to that building. And if you want to call us, um, or, excuse me, if you want to make an appointment, mm -hmm. you can visit us mm -hmm. in Taylor Ed, or you can call us. Our number is 919-530-6035, and we will be more than happy to take your appointments that way. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
And Miss uh, Miss uh, Beverly Mahomes is a proud. Uh, she's a writing consultant. She writing sure consultant. is. If you yeah. know of Auntie yeah. Bev, <laughs> uh, that is one of our top consultants. Yes, yes absolutely. And she knows how to write. She's yes, a, she, she does. She, she, she sure knows does. how to write and mm-hmm. speak too. And speak. Mm-hmm. She's a great speaker. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's a great speaker. She. Uh, what's her name? She's part of the uh, in the not in the ability to speak. Uh, it ain't be Jay Chapman. Yes. Yes. So she, she, I love her. She's been on the show too multiple times. So. <laughs> she's friends of the show. So shout, shout out, shout out, shout out, Bev. Bev. And Miss Bev. Bev is gonna, Auntie Bev is gonna get you all the way together too with love. Yes, yes. absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it, her delivery, and her is delivery yes. is loving. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, most certainly. Well, thank you guys so much uh, for coming on the show. You guys are welcome back anytime. Thank Let's go. You. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, we'll be right back. It's what's up, Shemai Cook. Up next is the hot question of the day. It's what's up, what's Shemai Cook. That was the weekend. Earned it here on NCCU Audio Net. Got my guest co-host Vanessa. Uh, Mr. Getting the Builder, how you doing, Vanessa? I'm doing so well. That's good, that's good, that's good. Let's get into the hot question of the day. The hot question of the day is, uh, you know, how long does it take for someone to get over their ex? What is your take on this question, Miss Vanessa? How long does it take to get over an ex? Okay, so I feel like there are just a lot of things that depend on the actual length of time like if okay so me personally i don't do that cheating stuff i mm, do not play that at all as you should. so if you cheat on me maybe i'm gone like um <laughs> you know I'm, my feelings might be hurt for like a little week or something uh-huh. but i'm gone immediately i gots to go you know so in that case it wouldn't take as long but if it's just like i don't know like if it's like i genuinely love you this is just not working out i might be toe up for like a good month maybe wow maybe but how long would it take you to get into another relationship that is the question Mm, to get into another i don't know i feel like (laughs) i don't know i'm i'm almost like i don't even want to oh gosh i don't know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, no, I really don't know because I just feel like I don't have a lot of patience. Yeah. So if I try this once and it doesn't work out, I'm not doing it again. So okay, so put your scenario. So you, you, you're in a relationship right now. Say right. If you and your and your guy this ended things right, right today. Okay. How would you fall back? Would it take you a long time to get recover or? Are you gonna get back into the dating? Scene? That's the question. That, that's. The, I don't think I would get back into the dating scene. Not, not immediately. Not immediately. Not immediately, or maybe not ever. What? So you like, might be. I so, have very so, little patience. So for you're. That. So you're gonna be the that lady with the cats at the at the end of the street, living by herself. Okay, so I get why you would ask that, but like, take a second to consider. Okay. I'm I'm Vanessa Olivia Messick, right? I'm yes. funny. I'm gorgeous. I'm fun. Yeah. I have so many things to offer. My life would not be bland just because I'm not in a romantic relationship. You know what I mean? Like, I would make sure that I'm surrounded by a community where even if I don't always have something to do, I have somebody in my corner. So just because I don't have, like, a boyfriend, significant other, what have you, Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good. Like, and I would probably have dogs before I would have cats. I love cats, though. (laughs) I do. I do love cats. These campus cats, I be feeding them. We friends. Oh, you're dangerous. (gasps) No, they like me. They like me, though. That is dangerous. (laughs) You don't know what they got, but I digress. I run away. Well, that's that means it's bad luck you see a black cat around running around here that's bad luck that's why you got exit out exit i don't out. know black yes. cats, black cats get a bad rap because like we're black you know so oh it's like I, I'm, I just feel like <laughs> they get a bad rap that's it's crazy. racism it's cat that's racism that's crazy i didn't look at it like that you might be right okay that's stay on script <laughs> let's stay on script. talk about cats talk okay. about the cat of the day uh no i feel like with this question i think that we should <sighs> okay it, it's a timey thing. Mm-hmm. So I put a thing on Instagram, and a lot of people saying some people said six months, some people said a year. I think other people, some other people said two years. I wow. think it's all yeah, it, it, it's all perspective. Yeah, it, it all in context as well. So like, like you brought up earlier, if someone cheats on me, it's over. Yeah, it, it, it's done. It's done. Like there's no going back. But I also believe in second chances. Because well, everybody's different, so you're you're different. But I was obviously second chance. It depends, but context matters. Context matters when it comes to, uh, you know, why a relationship ends. Yeah, that's 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 the only thing. I don't know. Oh, uh, two years though. Who I is think- out there? I, grieving I, for listen, two years. But the thing is, it, it, it depends on how long you were with that person. You so know? real. No, and, you're right. And it, it takes a long time for people to get over stuff. 
you know, I when agree. it comes to one, like, yeah. say, for God forbid, you were with somebody for five years. That's like high school. Yeah. Right. That's that's like that's had that's whole high school. That's like people develop in four years. Mm-hmm. Four, that's an entire years. era of your yeah, life. Yeah, that's an era. Of, exactly. That's like, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's crazy. Well, we want to hear your opinion. 919-579-2444 is the number. Uh yeah, we, I, I think yeah, I, I think it's, it, it depends on the year. Um, how how long and longevity. But Okay, so now now that we I wasn't considering that. Like the length of the relationship definitely plays a part. Mm-hmm. It's not that I wasn't considering it, but it wasn't in the, at the forefront of my mind. Yeah. So, and you got to think like some people, some people are out here together 10 years, like not even married, like just been together. That's true. For a long well, time. Well, marriage is a business contract though. Real. That's, that's the thing. Marriage is a business contract. It's an economical uh, contract. Go. So that's how the government does. So what's up with Shamai Cook? It's what's up with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. I'm my guest co-host, uh, Vanessa, uh, what's your last name? Missick. Missick. Yes. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's a Missick uh, here with me. Uh, how how you do? You doing a good job today? Your first time doing you know something involved with mass com. Yeah. How how are you enjoying everything? This is really fun. I'm having the time of my life. Like good. this is so fun. Good. But listen, we're tuning into some music. You know, she's enjoying the songs. You know, she she uh she doesn't really listen to the music that we play on the show, but. You know, she's enjoying what she hears. I am. Yes. There, like, there are some songs naturally where it's like, okay, I know it because I've heard it in like a reel or a TikTok video. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as the music that I listen to in my own time on my own phone, yeah, yeah, it doesn't match up. But these, like, these are still hits. I can't yeah. deny that. Yeah, we, I cannot. We, we, deny. That's all we do. Play the hits here on What's Hot with Shamari Cook. That's all we do. That's why it's hot. Yeah, that's, that's why it's what's hot. That's why it's what's hot. The exactly. hits are hot. The obviously. hits are hot. That's gonna be your sound bite. I'm telling you, <laughs> you're gonna be in a new another intro I make. Okay. Uh, up next is my quote of the day and more. Is What's Up with Shamari Cook. It is what's up with Shamai Cook. I am Shamai Cook. Uh, got my guest co host uh, Vanessa Missick in the building. Thank you so much for being with me all show, all two hours. We had a great time, didn't we? Yes, this has been phenomenal. This is yes, so fun. It has been. It has been. Uh, I want to thank our guests, Miss uh, Samantha Chaston and Miss uh, Amara Hand. Also, we had some great uh, conversations with them. Uh, make sure you guys, all NCCU students, make sure you guys go uh, check them out at the Writing and Speaking Studio at the Taylor Education Building. Uh, so make sure you guys check them out if you need help with your writing and speaking when it comes to papers and presentations. To go give them a visit. All right, enough for that it's time for my quote of the day you are responsible for your life so you need to stop blaming everybody else for your problems i love you for listening it's what's up with shamai cook see you guys next week this is an interruption Audio at Campus Access Radio News. the news is your news